on, everybody? My name is Mark Bruce, and this is Fit Strength Training, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to deadlift. And this is part one. So I'm going to introduce you those prereq movements as well as those beginner exercises to get you to progress to part two and be successful at part three where you will trap bar deadlift and do a conventional deadlift. So why do I think trap bar deadlifts are so important? Well, over the years coaching and training and just seeing how people move, when you are in that deadlifting position, you're in that perfect performance position. You're in that position that your coach is always yelling at you to get it, get lower, get bigger, arms up. Your head's probably going crazy like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So when we deadlift and teach ourselves how to get in those positions, you will see why it's so very important. So even if you're just a parent who always pick up your kids or picking up groceries, being able to deadlift will help you do it successfully so you don't get hurt. Think about when you're fielding a grounder. Think about when you're shooting a basketball. Think of when you're in a defensive position. That is a deadlift. So being able to do that with load will only mean when you're on the field, the court, when you're just working out and trying to reach your fitness goals, you'll be pretty good at it because now you've added load. You've given yourself that mental, that mental strength that I've done this with weight so I can do this better than my opponent. I can do this with heavier weight so I can reach my fitness goals. That's why I believe in the movement so much. So the first two prereqs that I've borrowed, that I've borrowed from Gary Schofield, who is who's very well known, as well as the FMS screen, is simply just toe touch test as well as an active straight leg raise. So if you can't touch your toes, guess what? You're not ready to deadlift. You're just not able to move in a functional way that will allow you to be successful, and you'll probably get hurt. So all you're going to do is just come here, and you're just going to try to touch your toes. And you can do it with a neutral spine with some, with some relatively straight legs, and you're good. If you slight bend in your back, that's okay because we don't have any load. But again, if you're rounding severely, then you're not ready to deadlift. The second one is an active straight leg raise. So I'm going to lay on the ground. I'm going to keep one leg straight, and all I'm going to do is raise the other. I want to make sure that my toe is pointed towards my shin, and I want to try to get my toe past my waistline, okay? And then alternate. And make sure that you're getting it past that waistline. If you can successfully do those two movements, well, now you're ready to take on the beginner exercises and then progress to your deadlift. The first exercise is a cat camel. This is going to teach you how to shift your pelvis, give you a little movement in that pelvis, and also this will strengthen your core, and also this will improve your mobility. So here you're going to be on the ground, knee, your four-point stance. You're going to be knees and hands on the ground. And you're going to round your back. And then push your pelvis, your butt, to that wall behind you, that imaginary wall. So again, round your back. And then push your butt back. So you're going to shift your pelvis anteriorly and then posteriorly. You want to keep your eyes down. I know some people may do this. But I want to promote a neutral spine just so we're not straining our necks when we are doing the bigger lifts. So round the back. And then push your butt towards the wall. The next one is a wall tap. So this is going to really bring alive that hip hinging movement. So I'm going to find, I'm going to use a pole. You may have a wall. You may have um, something else. So right here, I'm going to stand up tall. And I'm going to take a step out. Now, again, if you forget... Remember back to that cat camel. So you brought that pelvis in, and you shifted it back. When you shifted it back, that's going to put you in a neutral position. That's going to make sure that your hamstrings are engaged, your glutes are ready to work, your abs are tight. So now I'm going to push my butt towards that wall or pole, feel your hamstrings stretch, and drive your hips forward. And perform that three, rep, three sets, 10 to 15 reps. Make sure that you're not using that pole or the wall for balance, because if you are, then with a bar, you're going to fall backwards. Okay? The third one is just the build off of that wall tap. And we're going to use a PVC pipe. If you just have a broomstick, that's okay. So from here, I'm going to think there's a wall behind me. And I'm going to break at my knee, slight bend. And I'm going to let the bar drag down my quad as I hinge back, pushing my butt towards that imaginary wall, feeling those hamstrings engage, neutral spine, chin tuck, and drive my hips into the PVC pipe. Same thing, nice and slow, drive your hips in. 
give yourself a tempo so you get control, so you understand. So you may go down in one, two, three, four, one second pause, one, two. Just so going at that tempo, you're allowing yourself to gain control and to get an understanding of the positioning you should be in. So those are our three beginning exercises with those two prereqs. Once you progress from there, now we can move on to part two, and then you'll start, then you'll prepare yourself to do the bigger movement like a trap bar deadlift and the conventional deadlift. My name is Mark Bruce. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.